But earlier on on TalkSport, I was listening to uh, White and Jordan, Leeds fans calling in to talk about Gianni Alioski, one of their players whose contract ends this summer and the wing-back looks like he's set to join Galatasaray, go to the Turkish league when his contract expires. But of course, given the history between Leeds United and Galatasaray, that has left some Leeds fans very, very unhappy. Danny Mills, take us back to the year 2000 and, and tell us why this would anger some Leeds fans. Well, obviously, as a, as a football club, we were doing very well at the time. Uh, fantastic young side. Qualified for semi-finals of the UEFA Cup, as it was then. Um, obviously, from Europa League, it would be now. Uh, got drawn against Galatasaray uh, away in the first leg. Um, in the semi-final stage. In the semi-final, yeah. yeah. So, first leg of the semi-final in Istanbul uh, so we went over there a couple of days beforehand um, as you normally do just just you know Leeds fans coming over you know European Cup semi-final this you know Leeds United on tour and all that and, and just enjoying it you know as they normally would night before the game uh, <coughs> things started to kick off uh, there was we, we stayed right we stayed in the Kempinski Palace right on the Bosphorus which was a really bad idea in the first place because you know one of the must be one of the busiest shipping routes on the planet and of course every time a boat went past massive horn going yeah. off and that type of thing and that, that, and that set the tone for it very very well that was like from 5 o'clock in the afternoon all the way through and then by late into the evening I think one of the lads got a phone call oh, it's, it, it's kicking off in town because uh, obviously you know, family and friends were out there as well you know, at that time out to watch the game it's all kicking off in town you know, it, it, it's serious um, it, it's really gone off and those reports kept coming in and kept coming in and, and kept sort of you know kept the lads awake because everyone was sort of you know concerned about you know, family, friends, all these sorts of things that were going on. And clearly there was a lot of trouble happening, um, you know, in, in Istanbul and the city. And of course, we you know very very sadly later on we, we found out that obviously uh, Chris Loftus and, and Kevin Spate lost their lives uh, from you know from fatal stabbings that night. People were eventually punished uh, for that for those crimes. I think you know I think one did ten years. Uh, the other three guys six years in prison um, but of course this was still the night before the game uh, and, and it was obviously very very sad times we, we, was the game going to be called off should the game be called off we, you know, we woke up to you know, news channels all over the world sort of re reporting this and it was tough the game did go ahead uh, among some of the, the most stringent security that I've ever seen in my life um, I mean it was yeah Intimidating, yes, unbelievably. Galatasaray is like that at the very, very best of times. Um, scary, mm, not far from it. I tell you that. You know, we we went to the game on the bus. Uh, we'd already know. We we knew at this point that our fans would all be corralled into the ground. Uh, they they'd be taken along, and you know they'd basically be escorted by armed police all the way into the ground, and and that was it. And then they'd be escorted out straight to the airport, and and they'd go off. So there was no no more trouble anywhere. Obviously, there was no going to be no sort of vengeance or anything like that would happen. But we went, we went to the game, we got onto the bus and we had two armoured vehicles in front of us with massive water cannons on and then sort of a minibus in front of that with armed guards sort of hanging out the, the sides and the back. The same behind us, there's you know, six sort of armoured vehicles and as we got closer to the ground, we had riot police running alongside the outside of the bus. It was, it was like a war scene, you know, it was proper intimidating. And of course, we went into the change rooms and, and got changed. And when we came out for the the first warm up, you know, we, we went out. Sort of lads wanted to get out quite early just to get, I think, get rid of some of the tension. As you in the in the stadium as it was then, you came up from underneath, um, and sort of you know th underneath the tunnel and then up into into the stadium. And as we went to run out, suddenly all the police were like, "No, no, 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 no! Stop, 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 stop! What's going on? You, you can't go. You know, arms across us. They didn't speak great English." But then they got fully kitted up, you know, full riot gear, shields, the whole lot. And they also, and then they went and lined one side of the tunnel. And then as we ran out, it was just... <laughs> as missiles were hitting all these riot shields. And it was, you know, you was, every time you were flinching, every single time. I think the Leeds fans watched that game. I think they all turned their backs. None of them watched the game um, at all, re refused to do that. Um, I think maybe at the time we felt the game probably should have been called off, in all honesty. But yeah, two people went over to watch a game of football and didn't return. Mm. You know, they, they lost their lives, they were murdered. Um, so to go on from there, then what happened, it, 
it was then ramped up. You know, the bad blood between, I mean, Galatasaray. Oh, Matt, yeah, the, but obviously we, we never really played them again. We went to Turkey the, the following season in, in the Champions League, but we never really obviously involved with Galatasaray again. But then that sort of vitriolic spite escalated sort of between Leeds and Manchester United. Um, you know, get, Manchester United, there'd, there'd be Galatasaray flags and, and shirts um, at Old Trafford. Equally, Le- Leeds, Leeds fans were were as bad, by the way. And this this is this was going both ways. You know, some Munich songs and all those sort of things. You know, horrific, really. Um, you know, when, when we're talking about people that have lost their lives, but of course that just ramped it up, and that just ramped up that bad feeling between Leeds and, and Galatasaray. And then, of course, you know, Harry Kuehl went there, um, and Leeds fans took that as a as a real slight. I think, uh, re- well, I know for a fact they did. Really not happy. Uh, I don't think Harry's because he was in the team at, at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I don't think Harry's particularly welcome uh, back in Leeds uh, anywhere um, in, in any way, shape, or form by Leeds fans. Um, you know that their, their feelings are, are that strong on it. Mm. Uh, so then you sort of you come round to Jan Alioski, who is is a fantastic character. I mean, Leeds fans love him because he's he's adorable on social media. You know, he, he's absolutely brilliant. He's, he's superb, and he'd have been very very young might not have even known of the situation might be he, he, he's macedonian and he was probably about seven years he old might know he might be aware of it slightly but prob- possibly not in in the grand scheme of things and obviously how what it meant to the team at the time what it meant to the city at the time what it mm. meant to the football club at the time so but I, but i do f- i feel now that maybe the leeds fans are split some of them will go okay because you know time has moved on and he didn't really know about it. But I still think there will be half of them that would not be happy. And had there still been fans in the ground, there would be a lot of boos and a lot of jeers for him. Although he's although he's a very, very popular character, just because of that Galatasaray link, there would be a lot of people that won't be happy. I, I, I heard a caller earlier on, on on White and Jordan say that no one associated with Leeds United should ever deal with Galatasaray in any shape or form. That That's the level of the... Uh, hate I guess between the two and and I understand that to a point Um, you know it's very very difficult but from you know Gianni Olioski's point of view he wasn't involved at it at the time it was nothing to do with him and he still has a life and a family to support you know and and he still has to go on providing all those sorts of things so it's a difficult one I'm not sitting on the fence but I understand it from both perspectives because at the time, you know, all the players, were, there were family and friends out there. Mm. You know, they're the thinking, well, that could have been one of ours. Could have been somebody we really knew. And, and of course, you know, that was a son, a father, you know, a husband. That You know, those left behind have to deal with that. And, and Leeds fans, as we all know, Leeds fans are some of the best in the country. Very, very passionate you know, support their own and look after their own and, and and those feelings will will run for a very, very long time. Is it is this about understanding, you know, from, from both parties, the player and the fans as well, the fans understanding what you've just mentioned about his career and his family to support, of course, and then him having some understanding yeah, and, and, of what's and, gone yeah, on in the club as well. And, and that's why I think it will be 50-50. Uh, I think, you know, if, if that is the case, if, if, if he wants to come back to Leeds at any point, he probably just has to come out and say, look, you know... I don't really have many other options. I've got a family to support. I've got don't have too many options. I'd love to stay at Leeds, but that's not going to happen. And this is really one of the only places I can go. You know what? What would you do in in my situation? And I think the fans would, would understand that. But there will still be possibly half that just think it's completely unacceptable. And again, right, rightly or wrongly that's how they feel about it and and you can't really if if that's how they feel you you can't say they're wrong for having those feelings because of the the serious nature of what happened 